and then and then we're on. Oh, you're changing your shirt. <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> I, look all professional. I almost like, I just wanted the regular t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. But we're live now. We're we're live on Facebook right now. So <laughs> whoa. All right, guys. Got, got Alex is here. Uh, Alex is actually. We're gonna see how well he can do with an American accent because he's not. Uh, what time is it there where you are? It's six to eight p.m. Six in the morning. Okay, so he's uh. uh He's coming into our world to talk to us about fasting and some of the stuff that he's got going on at his, at his gym. And it's pretty cool that we can uh, have a conversation like this. Yeah, Be definitely. This far away, have it live, streamed out to you. Um, pretty cool. But, Alex, you, you want to just tell them a little bit about yourself, give them a little bit of backstory on you? Uh, backstory on me. So I've got a gym. On the south coast of England, I don't know why I'm pointing, as if like you know where the south coast is. So, gym in the south of England, I uh, train pretty much 95% men, just a bit older than me. So, uh, we hang out in the man cave, so we've got the bar, we've got the guitars, we just hang out and lift weights, and you know, I mean, chat about the stresses of modern day life. Um, previously to that, I used to train a lot of MMA guys, some of my guys fought in the UFC, girls that fought in Invicta. So like the heavy contact sport stuff, because I didn't mind getting punched in the face, so they listened to me about that kind of thing. And then that evolved into learning more and more, doing a master's in strength conditioning and becoming better at the job rather than just beasting people. So getting a bit more sensible and grown up. Uh, yeah, and then training grown-ups. So yeah, it's good. I love it. It's the best job. I've done that in a while, beasting people. It's like beasting people. Yeah, people, like yeah. what is? <laughs> tell them what that is. I, I would guess that most of them have no clue of beasting someone actually. Oh, beasting people is when when someone can't do any more. You just get in their face and go more, more burpees, <laughs> more squats, more press ups, like some kind of drill sergeant. But it's yeah. usually some people got a chip on his shoulder and rah rah rah. So yeah, yeah. Beasting people, is yeah. It's uh, it's for douchebags. Yeah, yeah. It's not very difficult to do, to be honest. Do that again, yeah. but faster. <laughs> yeah, I'll say some of that stuff around grit on a pretty regular basis, really. But it's always sarcastic. Like everybody yeah. just turns, just starts busting up laughing because it's it's so out of character, you know. Yeah, it's not not something I would actually do. But oh, no, my, my, well, I was gonna say, oh, my most sarcastic coaching point at the moment is okay, but careful because we don't want to get too strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. But that's, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, you don't want to be too strong, right? Like, wouldn't you want to prevent? Like, how do you prevent having veins in your abs? Yeah, that'd be yeah. bad. For me. Yeah, that'd be awful. Like, how do you prevent having like like a like a tone tricep muscle? I know roadmap vascularity. That's what they're after. That roadmap vascularity. <laughs> Um, I've heard that uh, I'm a really veiny dude. Actually, when I uh, when I lift, like my veins pop out of my. I, I've I've never actually seen it, but apparently it looks like a tree on my back. On your back? Oh, my, my arms are good and my calves are good and my quads, but not my back. That's crazy. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like this is what I hear. I think that's probably bullshit. But in college, all the guys would tell me that my back looked like there was a tree on it. <laughs> now, I don't have I don't have any tattoos back there, so. Don't ask me, but you got the veins rolling through the calves, huh? No, yeah. uh, I actually, I got that question the other day. Someone asked me, or I get it on a pretty regular basis, really, but I've never had it just straight on that direct where they said that we were talking about, um, about progress and they were asking me, like, like what kind of shape have you been in? And I was like, well, this and this and this. And they're like, well, how do we, because uh, I used to be like a, like much bigger than I am now. And uh, like I was, probably 20 pounds bigger muscle and I had probably I was down around like 7% body fat like I was pretty ripped up and they're like and <laughs> this person who's probably 30 per 40% ah, body fat is like how do I prevent that and I'm like oh my god that's just not <laughs> that's just, <laughs> this yeah. like, I don't even know how to respond to this at, at that point but <laughs> Don't, don't worry, we'll be all right. If you ever start showing signs, I'll stop you before it happens. Yeah, yeah that's what I should have said, but I didn't. But, well, um, tell them, about, tell them some of the, 
uh, we were just talking about this before we actually got on this call. Tell them a little bit about your master's stuff and what you're actually planning to do for your, what is it? Yeah, your, for master's dissertation. Are. So yeah. I was going to, um, I was going to look at some boxes and sort of rotation for a time machine, you know, like the Thomas Myers, like, anyway, we're not doing that anymore. So I'm going to look at health markers in 40 year old males. Um, and how either weight training or just cardio training or just caloric deficit can affect that. So we'll get some bloods done, look at testosterone, cholesterol, blood pressure, all that kind of stuff. And cool. then they either come here and do weights or they join their local running club or they join, we're talking about it, we have Weight Watchers over here, like a, a group where people, whatever, weigh themselves together every week. A bit like the biggest loser, but without the exercise. Uh, <laughs> and just, <laughs> I know exactly that. Yeah, so they, they pay their five pound a week, and then they come and check in, and yeah, see how much weight they've lost. So, yeah, so uh, yeah, investigate basically what's going to work, or if a blend works, or if everything works. There's also there's a thing called the Hawthorne effect. Hawthorne effect. I'm sure you know about it. Basically, if anyone that finds out they're involved in the experiment, just like just works a little bit harder anyway. It just does a little bit better. So even if doesn't matter what the intervention is. All these guys are going to watch their food a bit better. Do you know what I mean? They're all going to get fitter and better and healthier after 12 weeks because I'm taking their blood. So <laughs> kind of know the answer anyway. But it's going yeah. to be good. It's kind of a cool thing. It's that, uh, I use that as a justification for why you would join a gym. It's like, uh, like you don't go, you wouldn't want to go to a membership gym because uh, or these big box gyms like uh, like where all you do is you pay your ten dollars and you. And you get an opportunity to go work out because you, psychologically you'll never do it. You want to pay more for something because then you're going to actually – like even if you never showed up to the gym, you'd still, oh, I paid for that membership. So now uh, I'm paying all this money for this membership. I better eat better. I'm uh, paying all this money for this membership. I better actually show up is kind of like what ends yeah. up happening. You know, your, your accountability goes through the roof. And so just like what you're just saying, it's exactly. part of the reason yeah. that you want and that the accountability starts for that reason, and then they realize that they love it and it's really good and they should do it. And the guys at the gym are really cool as well. And that's yeah. our job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting to see the community kind of blossom out of what started out as like this really scary thing for most people. Like most people are really scared to walk into a gym. And then, uh, especially when there's uh, a strength coach or a personal trainer involved and they think they're going to get judged and they think they're going to be around all these really fit people that are going to uh, make fun of them and they have all these, uh, you know, unreasonable fears uh yeah. and they actually show up and they're like this is awesome i can do this i yeah. uh, can get results i am getting results i am showing up everybody's really positive i love all the people and they make all these new friends and then they have these friends for years and years and it's really it's really a pretty cool thing i never really thought that this was i like there's so many things about owning a gym that i never really thought were going that i never perceived experiencing yeah exactly you, st you see it starts to happen so wow that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You totally do. But, um, we were going to talk about fasting a little bit. How do you use uh, – I know I'm just totally transitioning without a tra – er, smooth, smooth segue then. Thanks. Yeah, I'm awesome at interviews. Um, fasting, how do you use it with your people? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? You know, go for it. Okay, so – you came to me, you said you wanted to lose whatever, 30 pounds over the next 12 weeks. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you something now, but you're going to freak out, but just listen. So what are we going to do? You're going to skip breakfast. Oh, but I thought, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So on the first day, you're going to skip breakfast. And you're going to know, you know what you're going to have for lunch, or you've got a packed lunch, or you know where you're going to buy your lunch from. It's all good. And you're going to be a bit hungry, but it'll be fine. And then the second, you're allowed a black coffee. That's cool. Drink lots of water. I'll have black coffee. You're fine. Second day, you'll be a bit less hungry. You'll be like, oh, I can do this. Third day, you'll be like, breakfast? What was that? And it's just, it's, it's that easy. Um, how else are you, how do I explain to people? So, I mean, we're like quite heavy guys that have got a high basal metabolic rate. So I think my basal metabolic rate is around 2,500. So, and with activity on top, it's like 3,300 calories. So to lose weight, I can eat 2,900 calories. But if I get to do that within eight hours, that's a lot more fun than dragging yeah. it out over 12 hours. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and like the research on it, I mean, there's lots of, hmm, what's the word, like, hokey 
Hokey, is that a word? Does that make sense? Hokey. I think, I think Eric will know what Hokey is. But. Yeah. Cellular cleansing and all this stuff. <laughs> it's just, it just, it just works. <laughs> it's like, and we go down the evolutionary routes, like no one knows what the Paleolithic people ate, but it makes sense that they didn't have, I mean, you remember I did that uh, fake infographic about breakfast being the most important meal of the day because Henry VIII invented the refrigerator and we always had fresh dairy on tap ever since the medieval times. So yeah, like the idea of having fresh food the minute when you wake up, even when like my kid's going to school, he's four, I'm like, make sure you eat breakfast and he's not really that hungry. And I feel guilty, like, make sure you eat breakfast. I'm sure he'd be fine, do you know what I mean? Kids have yeah. got, like the, the calorie equation on kids doesn't make sense because they just run around like lunatics all day and eat about a thousand calories, but we're just pumping more in. Even, yeah. even health conscious, do you know what I mean? Parents that are strength coaches or athletes, make sure you have your breakfast. And I'm thinking, he doesn't need it, he doesn't want it, but he's going to have breakfast, he can have it if he wants it. He's a growing boy, that's all good. But I'm just saying, it's a tradition, and obviously another thing I was bang on about, not with not with the client I was explaining, explaining fasting to, but it's 21st century life and calories and nutrient quality and temptation. Like going into Starbucks, you can whack up what a thousand calories and eat that. In oh, five minutes. yeah, yeah. And so um, my grandfather didn't have that. Do you know what I mean, he had sort of bread and a bit of meat and a roast dinner on a Sunday, and yeah. Maybe breakfast was the most important meal of the day back then. But yeah, so for me, it's just a way to eat those calories. And if those people that say they skip breakfast and worried about it, but then they'll smash the croissant at about 11, that is a problem. But there's yeah. no, no evidence about the whole boosting your metabolism thing. And there's, there's a quote from one of the books, actually. It says, and um, well, I don't think he says it, but I, I paraphrase Kaiser Soze from the, the usual suspects, you know, the greatest trick the food industry ever pulled was convincing us that we had to eat more food to lose more weight. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you need to stoke your metabolism. It's like, no, you just need to eat less calories. So yeah. That's yeah, it. So, yeah. Total bogus. Sorry? Like, stoking your metabolism, that whole thing. I mean, I bought into that when I was in high school. You know, and I get why people do it. Makes it makes sense when people say when a nutritionist or dietitian or personal trainer or whatever explains like, oh, you got to eat every two to four hours to make sure your metabolism doesn't die. It's like, nah, your metabolism is not going to die until you do, dude. Like, <laughs> your metabolism is going to die. I mean, did you ever read? We were just talking about you're a bit younger than me, but did you ever read Bill Phillips' Body for Life? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. It was like. So it came oh, out about like I'm a book junkie, so at this point I've probably forgotten more books than I have read. But it was like, I it was like the, book somewhere. Yeah, get it out. It's the original before and after thing. The twelve week he invented the twelve week transformation basically. But within yeah. his hardback glossy book, he recommended you have a meal, a myoplex shake, a meal, a myoplex shake, a meal, and a myoplex shake. Six meals to start a metabolic fire. And if it's in a hardback book, it must be true. We all know yeah. that. And guess who owned Myoplex? Bill Phillips. That that was was like, do you remember when that came out? That was like the first protein shake that didn't taste like garbage that was rotted. You know, it, like, that was like the first one that tasted even moderately good. Yeah, and you'd have to do it in a blender though, so it's like really thick and creamy. But yeah. Yeah, it was something nasty yeah. That, yeah you could just shake it out of a shaker bottle. Like supplements were not like they are. No. <laughs> they were so got nasty. It. Got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the origination of some of this stuff is is complete bogus. Um, like I like breakfast. Like me personally, I like breakfast food. Yeah. So I eat breakfast food. Like I'm hungry in the morning. I eat breakfast. Like I like it. Uh, but I'll wait until 10 a.m. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, breakfast food. What's, what's breakfast food in Iowa? I do. Me personally, I do two two pieces of bacon, uh, eight eggs, uh, big as much spinach as I can fit in the steamer, half a cup of steel cut oats with some craisins and cinnamon, and then with the bacon, I do about a half an onion and about five big mushrooms. That's breakfast for me, dude. That's that's serious, man. That's good. Mm -hmm. Dude, I told you I like breakfast. It's it, breakfast. It's like my thing. Yeah, 
if I ever come over, if I come over to, to your place, I'm, I'll make you breakfast. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Very so my wife's away this, this weekend, so I've got black pudding. Do you know what black pudding is? No. Nah. It's like blood. It's like congealed blood in a sausage, and you slice it up and fry it. So I bought myself some black pudding and some bacon. Oh, real blood. Like real blood. Yeah. That's Actually, you can only buy it from like real butchers, like a genuine butchers. You've got like dead cows hanging up, like Rocky Balboa delivered their cows. Yeah. And they drain all the blood. And they That's, That's a blood sausage. Here I was. I thought I was uh, such a real man for eating my breakfast, and then you go in with that. <laughs> yeah, fried blood for me on Sunday. Or if I come to your place, I'll bring you some blood sausage. Um, but yeah, so yours is like protein and fat heavy, right? Yeah, I don't. Know. Yeah, my breakfast. I mean, I'm I'm delaying it out. I've already I've already done my workout at that point. Um, like I don't believe in fast and cardio or anything. That's like the dumbest shit ever. But at the same time, like it just works for me. Like I get up and I just go work out right away, and then I'll delay out until ten uh, to eat, and then I'm basically heading to work after that. Yeah, so cool. like, that's how it works for me. So like like that's like I get a short fast, and then one day a week I'll fast until like like seven o'clock at night. Nice. That's so right. Non-training day or just What's you that? train as well on that day? You train on the, the long day? Yeah. Uh, like I won't train very hard. Um, that's like a day where I might do like, like I might ride a bike for 45 minutes or I might do my warm up, my warm up that I'm doing at the time. I'll do that like three or four times or like two to four times. Four is pretty rare. Three is pretty normal. Um, and I'll just, I'll just head on. It's more of an active recovery day for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. I don't train hard on that day. Once in a while, I have before. You just, just kind of feels like shit. <laughs> it's just, just regret it afterwards. Yeah. You just sleep really hard. You know what I mean, a little like, you know, that's about it. So but how, do you, how do you break your fasts? What it like? Because that's the thing. Like, th this is something that some people are like. You have to. You can break your fast with whatever you want. Some people are like you have to have a salad. How do you how do you get people breaking their fast? Um, personally, it's like boiled eggs. So hard boiled eggs, like a mind yolk. Do about eight minutes of boiling water, and a bit of ham and a few walnuts. If I if I'm like being good and train like an athlete and eat like an athlete, and that's the way, then I might even have a kale smoothie after that. But yeah, if I'm fasting and I'm eating well anyway, I just find protein and fat and like quite tasty but dull um yeah if like it i'm not going to get starving afterwards but if i have like a uh, a carb fest and have like go get on a bit of a frenzy like a coke fiend or something that's not a good look but yeah i wouldn't recommend breaking your fast with a cake or a, a pastry no you just fall asleep you fall asleep i mean like i've done it before i've been like ah you know what and this was like straight justification on my part. I, I was like, I'm going to eat all the pizza I want. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I think I ate two whole pizzas. Like, like the grease, like I went to where you could buy like the greasiest, nastiest pizza in town. And I ate two of them. And I, I mean, I just passed out for like 12 hours. I think I was pretty exhausted at that point too. But that, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was a terrible thing to wake up from. I was so I've never been so thirsty in my life. <laughs> the soul and the yeah, the dough and stuff. Yeah, and then yeah. you said the wheat, but then that was demonized wheat. I mean, we don't want to demonize wheat. No, no, or dairy. Have you? Yeah. So you, so you're breaking it. You're kind of saying like you don't want to go on a carb frenzy. You don't want to act like a coke addict going after carbohydrates, but. Uh, yeah. you, but you do want to get something in your body that can sustain you, something that takes a little while to digest, like an egg or some kind of meat. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And chew it well and all this stuff. And it's almost like advising a newbie into this whole thing. It's like, yeah, slow down, think about this, blah, blah, because it is, it is a kind of new thing, not eating for 18 hours or whatever. It's for, for most people, they're like, oh, my God, my body's starving. Like, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, and then you have, Regular really, meals up. Go for it. I'm cutting off. It's it's the it, we have it. B Live has this slight delay, so it kind of gets in the way a little bit. But go for it. 
a few thousand miles apart as well. <laughs> yeah, that that one little half second delay that throws us off that we're like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, Say. Yeah. But no, uh, one of the ways that I use it, I mean, because like, for instance, males seem to respond better to fit to fasting than females do. Like it seems research would suggest that uh, females don't respond near as well as males do to fasting. But I still use it with females from time to time as a way to uh, acknowledge unconscious eating. Like how often are we shoving something in our mouth? So if you just say you don't get to eat till 4 p.m. in your head. And then you're going to start noticing how often do you reach your hand in the candy jar without even acknowledging that you're putting something in your mouth? How often do you reach for something that you don't actually want to eat and you didn't even realize that you ate it? Uh, that's one of the ways that I use it. And just to to build that, um, I don't know, the, uh, the ability to be hungry. Yeah. Yeah, to no hunger a bit better. Yeah. Something, uh, Joey, Joey Persia, he's a, he's a trainer in the States. He, he says, yeah, you'll skip breakfast and you'll start to learn the difference between hunger, thirst, and boredom. And like, actually, yeah. reduce my hunger. And then just like, yeah, I get this thing where I'm in the kitchen. I must be hungry. I'm not hungry at all. I'm just in the kitchen. So yeah. I want to put like, put something in my mouth. Yeah. Um, unnecessarily. It's so. really fairly natural. I mean, that's the, like, you've conditioned yourself the whole life, your whole life to associate the kitchen with food. Yeah. and food you know consumption why wouldn't you why would you go to the kitchen if you're not going to eat something yeah but then and then these days the kitchen is like the center of the home so like the, the kids don't even go in the, in the living room or whatever we're just playing We've got tv in the kitchen the kids are playing in the kitchen they come home from work go to the kitchen so yeah which would mean i'd be eating a lot if i just ate when it was in the kitchen but yeah so it's just discipline like you were saying the other day discipline is important <laughs> it is. Um, how are you coming up with these memes? Oh, the memes, your meme game. Uh, the meme game. Well, I don't know. They just sometimes it just comes to me, and literally, and like I write it down. You, you probably have the same. Like when you, if you're going to do a blog post, once you start creating content, you're like, oh, I've got to write that down. I've got to turn that into a thing. Oh, yeah, it's like a flow. Uh, and then that sort of snowballs and you sleep on it and then your unconscious works on it and then you wake up and you find the right picture and then it's just it writes itself so um someone was asking me why i train i mainly train men now and no no offense to anyone online right now but i said i just got a bit fed up of hearing about periods and bloating and this and so yeah like a meme started forming in my head like the three things that do not get discussed in my gym anymore <laughs> No and uh, in in yeah. uh, in Alex's place, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah. Uh, the jokes that I use. That's one of the jokes that I use. Is that um, when I got into this, I had like I, I know more about things than most males do, just because of the willingness that females have to tell me things that are going on. Yeah, like their flow their menstrual cycle, the what happens when you age through menopause. Like, and I don't care. Like I'm a pretty easy, safe sounding board. So like, I'll just sit there and like, I'll listen. I'm curious. Like I'm, you know, cool. You know, whatever you want to tell me that, uh, to get off your chest. But I'm like, sometimes I hear stuff and I'm just like, I can't believe you just told me that. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. It's, it's a good sign that they trust us and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's really yeah, good. It's the line. And then someone came in once and they've had, <clears throat> an acid face peel. Do you have like an acid face peel? Do you know what that is? Uh, sadly, I, I do know what that is. But yeah, I didn't know it was one, but they look terrible. So one of my clients had one, and then two years later, another client came in. I was like, oh, you had an acid face peel? And she was like, yeah, how do you know? I'm like, yeah, because I'm a personal trainer, and we know that kind of thing. Because <laughs> your face is falling off because you put acid on it, which sounds terrible, and now literally it's falling off. Like... You got dandruff on the forehead. It's <laughs> gross. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nah. That, is that how you take your beard off every day? Yeah. Just, yeah, just a bit of acid. That's how real men shave. Really yeah. Acid. I don't have that problem. Just like Vicky Vale. It was, no, it wasn't Vicky Vale. It was the other one that got acid thrown in their face, wasn't it? Was I don't know. Oh, the, uh, what's the name? 
Yeah, it's going to take me too long. Yeah, that's, a good, anyway. that's what Google's for. We don't have to think anymore. We can just outsource to Google. Exactly. Who wants to do a pop quiz? So like, Jim, but pop, we have a pub quiz, I think called a pub quiz, where everyone goes to the pub, sits on a table, yeah. But no phones are allowed because you're just Google shit. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, I'm not very good at those. Rachel's really good at those. I, I kind of suck. I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I missed out on pop culture and everything. Like, I was too busy reading this about string conditioning. Geeking out. I don't out. know. I about Top Gun high fives and stuff, so it's all good. I do. Like, yeah, early night, all the stuff that I'm a little too young for. Because I had older siblings that, like, there's certain movies that I should have never been watching that I watched. Like, yeah. Working Girl. I should have never seen that. Which one? Working Girl. Oh, yeah. Working Girl. Classic. Yeah, I there I was I was like four years five years old watching that movie. Like, there's no way I should have been watching that. I didn't understand the lingerie scene. I was like, why would she wear that? I don't get it. <laughs> it's not even a good movie. It's like, it's like you see some boobs in it at one point. I remember, and then <laughs> yeah, it's like Titanic. Everybody thinks it's good, but it actually sucks. <laughs> yeah, I was in see boobs in it once. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, a little bit too much of our actual personalities are coming out in this in this talk. Yeah. Uh, you should have yeah, left your other been... not been professional. <laughs> um, what else do we need to talk about? So we talk about fasting, talk about male markers of health. What do we think about? I mean, what, what clean food? We, we touched on that, like wheat and dairy and all that jazz. What do you think? Ah. Uh... I don't get too I don't get too romantic about it. Uh, like I wouldn't say I give really unclear answers around this, and I wish that I had a more just like one sentence approach to it. But if uh, if you're making if you're good eighty percent of the time, I think you're good, you know. And if, uh, if you eat these really high, like if we're going for fat loss and we're eating really high calorie dense food, like you know your cheese and your breads and your stuff that is typically not okay in current status quo <laughs> yeah. talk, which is cool. super um, like it's gonna like if you eat those foods it's gonna be harder to keep your weight down like it's just so easy to over consume on them so to me it's like you already know how to eat just make better choices but i don't i don't really get into that like the toxin thing I don't, like like get out of here like, uh, um, where like, uh, oh, you're like meats have toxins in them. Dairy has toxin in them. Like, shut up. Just get out of it. Get out. Like, no, one, no one can name a toxin. I said, go on, name a toxin. I'm like, caffeine, sugar. <laughs> That's both pretty cool. I'm not, I'm not giving those toxins up. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with sugar. I'm okay. With, I'm definitely okay with caffeine. Like, don't be taking my coffee away from me. Yeah. There's a lot really? of that. One thing, one thing did occur to me the other day. So, I work with a lot of guys that used to use a lot of bad stuff, or whatever. And it seems like they still they've substituted alcohol or drugs for sugar, and yeah. products of well this as well. And like, so they're using sugar and they're still getting off the head with sugar. And so I started trying to think of sort of definitions of addiction, and so sort of stuff like if you do something which should be a social thing in private. So say, say it's cocaine for you, and like cocaine well, is a bad drug, but it's more of a party drug. But if you're locked in your room doing cocaine by yourself, that's probably a bad thing. If you're yeah. getting a 12-pack of Krispy Kreme donuts to, that should be shared with the office, and you're locking yourself in your room with the Krispy Kreme donuts, that's a bad thing. If you're drinking a bottle of vodka by yourself, that's a bad thing. Um, yeah, and, or if you're doing it in secret. So this is fun. <laughs> so like doing it, no doing it myself, or doing it in secret so like I'm just going to knit this in before anyone knows like I'm, I'm totally normal I'm totally normal I'm still normal um, yeah but I like, so if you sub that out for sugar I'd say there's still a problem or food I'd just say yeah it's a little way of maybe telling yourself you need to have a talk with yourself about something or another I don't know yeah. right when it comes to the addiction thing I think I have a little bit of a different view on addiction than most people have because like I probably did develop an addiction at one point in my life and I grew up um, in a scenario where 
a, an extremely addictive, what would be classified as an addictive drug was uh, I was forced to take it every day before school, like oh. Adderall, Dexedrine, Ritalin, uh, yeah. those kind of drugs. So, I mean, we're, we're pushing these into these kids and not, not to say that every kid, like the kids can't benefit from these because there are, are times where drugs are, uh, can be appropriate. Um, like for instance, like, uh, like if you're going to take antidepressants because you feel like pulling your car into oncoming traffic, like you're a public health concern at that point, you should be on some kind of medication. Uh, but we're, we're pushing that, uh, drugs into these kids and, um, and these five year old, six, seven, eight year old kids are not developing addictions to these mediums yet. They're classified as the, like millions of kids across the, and none of them are getting addicted to it. So why are we classifying these as addictive drugs? Does that make sense? Or the same thing with sugar. I don't think that the medium is actually the addiction. I think the medium that people use, like alcohol, sugar, drugs, whatever it is, is the uh, is just the scapegoat. It's just the, oh, I'm going to reach for this because something else triggered something in my brain. So I got scared, so I reached for alcohol, or I got... Uh, a little uncomfortable, so I reached for a donut, or I got a little uncomfortable, so uh, I reached for drugs. I don't, I don't think that the medium that people reach for is the actual addiction. I think that something else is triggering that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've worked with people, and it's about the trauma. So, you, for to, to cut it short, like you're not happy being in your own skin, so I think yeah. it takes you away from this reality, whether it's just being off your head on sugar or off your head on drugs. Right. Like that's yeah. it. And you, yeah, anything to make you feel better for 15 minutes you know like if you if you fucking hate who you are which a lot of people i guarantee you there's a lot of people out there that just hate who they are like i spent like not to get like too deep in on this but i spent a lot of years of my life just absolutely with hatred for who i was and reaching for different mediums to try to get out of that you know like exercise food uh, uh alcohol you know whatever it was and i think a lot of people do that and i i just took like some that was kind of a jo joking conversation to like a really serious thing so sorry for that man but um but i think a lot of people do that <laughs> yeah do that and just and and i don't think that's a that's like a regional thing i think that that's just humanity i think we kind of we um we all have fears that we're trying to manage and sometimes they end up managing us. Then we reach for this shit to try to cover it up, but it only lasts like 15 minutes and then we're got to reach for it again. And eventually we don't need the, the, the uncomfortable or the hatred or the fear or whatever it is. We just reach. Yeah. Yeah. Someone told me about it, like not a study, but some stuff about the soldiers in Vietnam. who were yeah. like using their wings to sort of just, yeah, if they're not, they couldn't handle what they were seeing out there. And then they came back and they weren't junkies because they weren't surrounded by that trauma anymore. So that's like, that kind of sums it up. Yeah, if you're away from that trauma, but if the trauma is inside you, and you can't escape it, then yeah, you can't have to work with it. Yeah, it doesn't matter how hard you run you or how far you go, like you're always going to be, end up being there. If it's yourself that you hate, that yeah, that's the problem. I think you have to do. Yeah. Then you got to confront that internally. Yeah. yeah. That's but. the hard thing. We just got real deep, didn't we? We just took that. We just took that to the depths of the ocean, whatever. Oh, someone to a fault or something, and then bring it back. So, you say someone, one of us needs to fart, and then bring it back to to, to shallow. <laughs> yeah. I don't have one brewing, so I can't help you out. <laughs> no, I've been fasting, so I haven't got anything brewing. Ah, well, maybe Rage says who's winning, so I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what's that? They have to tell us. Right. I don't know, what, what was the competition? But out sarcasm each other. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to ask her here in a little bit when I see her. But, um, but I do try to end these at, at, at a half an hour. I never do. Never do it. But do um, you have any other um, words of wisdom, things you want to leave uh, the viewers with or – well, people keep saying, like, what's your message? What's your key message? Yeah. Like, what's your core values? Yeah. I struggle with it, but mainly it's don't be a dick. Don't be a dick? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> everything else will fall into place. Like, <laughs> like in the gym, if you're, if you're not a very good trainer, don't train people. If you're, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's from Wayne one. Like, if you're shit at that, don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't steal, don't be mean, you know what I mean? I like that. Don't I like it. Yeah. yeah. I like to say, like, 
If you're not good, get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get better, and if you don't know, learn. Well, yeah. If you're gonna do it, do it well. If you don't, if you don't have to do it well. Don't do it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think uh, like for all you guys watching, I think that Alex and I fall into this category where uh, we end up having to deal with all of the bullshit other trainers that suck that make our job harder because people don't want to believe like they get like skeptic to everything because they've been burnt by one yeah and then we charge when we're a bit more expensive or that's like well no because like you said all you were doing is reading books we've been doing this for over a decade whereas and it's what we do and it's our passion passion do you see that thing i wrote the other day definition of passion is the willingness to suffer something that you love so yes yeah, staying home reading nerdy books about well, we've got neuromechanics of human movement. <laughs> that is suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Those are hard to read. They read, like, they read like stereo instructions. People don't even understand. Like they, they're like, oh, so you read that? And I'm like, yeah, cover to cover, every word. Uh, like it's like they don't believe you. And it's like, no, that book sucked to read. It's because I care. Like <laughs> I read it because I care. But whatever. Yeah, keep training for that chance. But yeah, yeah um, so words of wisdom, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Uh, that's I can deal with it. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. I, I think all the people here really appreciate it too. Hopefully they got a ton of good takeaways there. I actually was taking notes the whole time. You guys didn't even know this, that I just sit here and scribble stuff down. But wisdom. You didn't even know. You didn't even know. I mean, through the through the English accent, obviously I can't write it your way. You're gonna watch it all again and try and translate it and maybe play it through Siri or something. She can translate it for you. <laughs> Actually, I thought you came through really well. Like, I mean, I don't know. I've heard other guys where, I, you know, sometimes I hear accents where I'm like, I have no clue. I know you're speaking English, but it's not yeah. happening. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, thanks for being here, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you very Let me much. Podcast out, and then thanks, guys, for watching.